and on our CPU board. Whenever you have to clear the RAM or change out an EEPROM, you have to be very careful lifting out the EEPROM. If you don't do it correctly, you can scratch one of the data lines underneath in the socket area. Let's see, I'm going to go ahead and perform a RAM clear. How many have seen what one of these things are here? <laughs> you do? You're not supposed to use a screwdriver. It's a shoehorn, isn't it cute? Look how cute I know I got another one around here. Isn't that cute? It's a staple remover. Yeah, it's a Stanley. <laughs> I thought this was a genuine Williams chip remover. It will. G2 staple remover. We also have a G3. Oh, it's a Stanley. There, yeah, Stanley staple remover, wow. G2. I've never even seen this tool ever, ever, not even in a... Really? In, not even in a, in a office depot. That's the one that we recommend that everybody uses, cool actually. Like I had a G3 around here. Hmm. Anyway, the G2 will work. Here, here it is. Here's a swing line right here. That's made by swing line. The Stanley, uh, these are harder to find anymore. Here's a swing line. It's pretty much basic. <laughs> or flicking peas. And what I like about them is they have a rounded uh, surface on the end, and it's not sharp like a screwdriver. Screwdriver, when you're digging under there, to get the EEPROM out. Okay. Okay, we're going to pull the XU3 right here. Okay, uh, the game EEPROM. That's where we have to clear the RAM. So we're going to perform a basic RAM clear here. Now we recommend that you do a RAM clear. Like per se, if uh, has anybody ever seen um, soft clear, soft RAM clear required on the screen in the hot dog tilt? Yeah. You've seen data corrupt, you know, and push the button, touch the screen, and it keeps going back and forth. Okay, whenever that occurs, it's recommended that you do a hard RAM clear, is what we call it. And that's where you have to break the seal, pull the chip out, put in the, the RAM clear, the appropriate RAM clear EEPROM, set the percentage, and all of your video options. So that's what we are basically going to demonstrate at this time. Don't worry about your scene. You just go ahead and do it. Okay. okay, we're going to go ahead and pull the XU3 out. Notice how I work this between the chip and the socket. And gently rock it up and down a little bit. Don't dig down too far. Because if you look down there underneath the socket, okay, see, those, see those traces? Those are easy to, to scratch. With a screwdriver, all you got to do is scratch one of them and the board will fail. You try to get the board to come back up, you get a black screen, nothing happens. You'll notice the trouble LED on your video I.O. board will stay lit, that little red, or the red LED here on your CPU, that stays solid eight. Yeah, this, this is like an LED as well, fail. And that will stay lit, as long with the, with, when we get to the I.O. board, I'll show you that one. It's called the trouble LED on the I.O. board. Both will be solidly lit. Okay, that means that your game's dead because you have a cut trace. So, that's why you want to be very careful lifting out the EEPROM that we don't scratch or cut up any of these traces. Now, here we have the RAM clear chip. Okay. 
So after we pull XU3 out, we want to be careful that we put it in, use your fingernail, find the notch, and be very careful inserting that you don't mispin it, because that can happen very easily. Okay, how do we look there? Okay, and that's your V0000005-400. Now, we usually uh, highlight our RAM clear chips according to the universal um, denominational coloring. You know, red's nickel. Let's see. This one here, the colors I wore, I've used it so much that I've worn the color off. See, there's a little bit of red oh, yeah. right there. <laughs> my, my thumb has the rest of it on there over the, the past several months. Uh, okay, and you'll notice it's a one meg EEPROM. It's a nickel. And that's the part number, V000, which shows it's a video RAM clear. 0005, that's your denomination. 400, that's your revision number. And that's version 4. That's the one currently that you are using in California, except for the Golden Acorn, which uses the multi-denominational RAM clear. We won't cover that here at this time, but I will be down to your casino to go over some of the multi-denominational facets. When are you going to do that? Um, possibly next month, as soon as I can get it scheduled. January sometime? January, February, we're looking. February would be better for me. February? Okay. <laughs> yeah, January. I'm doing the Tech Fest in Las Vegas, and then the big gaming show in London is in January. Okay, probably February as well. And I also have a um, thermal ticket printer training classes as well. Oh, yeah. So most everybody here will be, going over, will be going over the hopper. Anybody with thermal ticket printers, we can, I can put you through a class there. We tear it apart, put it back together, show you how to set up the options. And we really go through it real well. OK. Let's go ahead and we'll do our RAM clear here. Now that we've inserted our 5 cent nickel RAM clear, we're going to put it in the card cage. Now, in the card cage, on the upright game, you'll notice that the CPU is on the far left and the I.O. is on the far right. Now, it's real hard to interchange or mix these boards up. If you notice at the top of the board, there's a little notch there. Okay, that notch interacts with a, a key on the back plane, which I'll show you right here. Here's an upright back plane. Okay, oh, yeah. see these three notches? Those three posts? Uh, posts, uh, not notches. These posts will fit in the notch on the uh, circuit boards that go into the correct row. Like on the left, you have your CPU. Beautiful. Notice that? Yeah. Nice. So if we tried to plug it in the middle. Yeah. WMS but, always been really good about idiot proofing your stuff. <laughs> Yeah, notice that it's not going to go in there. You're going to get up to there. Don't force it, because then... <laughs> if it doesn't fit, get a bigger hammer. Is that how it looks? Right. You, you don't want to get a bigger hammer in this case. Just try a different notch or look at a game next to it and verify that that's the position it's supposed to go in. So, yeah, they, they did a, a good thing by making the idiot proof there. Idiots like me can even try it sometimes, but uh, after you do a few thousand of them, it becomes second nature. Okay, after we plug in the CPU board, then we want to plug in our VGA harness connector into the connector here. Now that sends the video signal, the red, green, actually blue, and the, uh, video, the vertical and horizontal sync signals. That is a standard VGA connector. Right. You can regular computer monitor, stick it right next to the game and hook it up to that. Yes, you can. Yeah, you can, you can get one of those big plasma displays and you can... Oh, yeah if you wanted to do that as well. <laughs> okay, we'll power up the game. Okay.
Notice we didn't hear a bong. That's because we have a ram clear in there. Now if you read up here in the upper left corner of the monitor, it's hard to see. It'll say ram clear and then it gives the part number of the ram clear chip. Yeah, and then version 4.0. CPU is a 1.5. Machine body is 17 inch upright. And you'll see here jumping around the screen we have touch screen to clear RAM, five cents. So to clear your RAM, all you have to do is touch your touch screen. And what the RAM clear chip will do at that point, it'll dump out your secure memory on your back plane, clears out all the secure memory, and it rewrites the new secure memory in there being a nickel and all your default option settings. All that information is put back in your E-square on your back plane that I had showed you earlier. That, right, it clears the E-square, set your, we call them default options, you know, which you'll have to go through all your optionings, which I'm going to show you in the administration mode. And we have to set all those up whenever you perform a RAM clear. Now, as I was mentioning, you want to perform a, a RAM clear like that whenever you see that soft RAM clear, RAM signature corrupt, operating system corrupt data on the screen, we want to do this hard RAM clear. If you go ahead and do the soft RAM clear and you let the game, and the game will come back up if you do it enough times, then you're going to, it's a possibility your secure memory may be corrupt. Some of the uh, corruption that caused the RAM signature corrupt could be still floating in the RAM. And that can surface at any time, cause the game to lock up and you could have weird issues further down the road. So, right, sometimes you won't be able to get into test either. That's another good symptom. Um, we've seen, you know, the screen freeze in different colors. You know, the buttons will stay lit. They, they won't change. You know, you can get all sorts of weird symptoms happening. So we recommend that you do this hard, we call it a hard RAM clear, where you actually take out the XU3 EEPROM put in the XU3 RAM clear, then you touch the screen. Okay, then it stops moving. Go ahead. Oh, you've seen that on here, right? Oh, insufficient video memory? Oh, LCD insufficient video memory. Is that the board on, on the LCD or? Yes, that would be up here. Okay. Really, there's a separate computer just for the LCD? Yes, and uh, this afternoon we're going to cover the LCD. I'll, we'll get into I'll show you how that works as well. And, okay, notice that after I touched the screen, the, the RAM cleared five cents, stopped jumping around. It's stationary now. Okay, and then there was a bong sound. That's important. Our, our famous bong, you know. <laughs> yeah, you got to like that. Whenever you hear the bong, then, then, you, then it's, that means it's safe to power the game down. Okay, if you try to power it down before the bong sound, there's a possibility that secure memory has not received all the information from the RAM clear chip to set the secure functions that it's supposed to have. So, after you hear the RAM clear, it's safe to, that bong sound, it's safe to power the game down. So that's what we're going to do now. Oops, Oops sorry. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. That's okay. We're technicians, we can fix that stuff. Yeah, just stick it in my pocket. Okay. Okay, after the RAM's cleared, pull the board out. We use the ejector tabs. And you want to handle the edge of the board, being careful not to reach your fingers underneath or behind it. If you reach your fingers underneath or behind it, you can possibly, you know, short across a static RAM and cause a corruption. Remember yesterday, Ken was mentioning about electrostatic discharge and all that. So ESD, yes. It's really a killer. I mean, it's just, just to put it in perspective, you know we were talking about how these things are five volt thingies. Where you shuffle your feet on the carpet and build up a pretty good static charge and that you can draw a little tiny arc to someone else or a screw or something, that's about 10,000 volts, just to let you know. So no matter how well 
shielded anything is, if you zap it with 10,000 volts, all it has to do is couple 10 volts to the chip, 1,000th of that voltage, and it'll blow the chip. So it's, I mean, it's really easy to do. Yes, that is correct. <laughs> That's why when, you're, when you clear the RAM, you, you don't want to do a lot of walking around, stay by that machine. And as I'm saying, hold it by the edges, don't hold it underneath or reach around and try and cause any static discharge. And then a lot of times you'll just set it on the chair or actually when, if you're changing CPUs, you have an anti-static bag handy or don't want to set it on a metal surface because that can short the pins underneath and that can also corrupt your RAM as well. You know, that's a really good point about sticking by the machine because it, I mean, it's pretty natural. Pull the board out and go to the shop with it, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, always use an anti-static bag, which is whenever you're transporting a, a <coughs> type of um, CPU board, I.O. board, whether, whatever it be, electronic device like that, you want to use your anti-static board. And that'll protect it from getting zapped and blowing up your RAM. Because our video I.O. board has some static-sensitive CMOS chips on it as well that can be blown up and cause some button corruptions and malfunctions as well. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and remove the RAM clear chip using our swing line staple remover. You have to get a part, WMS part number for that. It, <laughs> but usually you can get it right from your office supply store right in town. Yeah, th th these are about $3, I think. And any office supply store you can get them. Okay, now we're ready to put in our XU3 chip. Okay, and then make sure the notch is in the correct position. Now, after we have the XU3 in, we want to also, at this time, set the percentage of the game up. In this particular case, I checked it before I powered it off, and this was set at 92%. And as Ken was saying yesterday with IGT92, that's our pay, payback percentage. That's how much the game pays back, theoretically, to the customer. And the hold, you subtract 92 from 100, you get 8. So theoretically, it's holding 8% for the house. Okay, And your slot director is the one that usually, or the tribal council will make that decision as to what percentage each game will be. And they keep a machine folder in their filing cabinets and a history of what, what each game should be set at. So um, whenever you clear RAM here at VA Haas, for instance, um, you have a tribal gaming officer with you, I, I would assume. And do they usually have a copy of the uh, the game file that tells you what percentage it should be set at? Or they, they would know what it should be at? Or yeah, in case of a fatal you know, failure where you don't they know what? Have a copy. Okay, they would tell you what to set the percentage at. Okay. So we have this little device here. It looks like an E square chip, it's got eight pins on it. And that's called our percent key. Is it an integrated circuit?